Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. This is week now. What is this? Week three, four? I don't know. Anyways, we're still new at this. So uh, if I burp into the microphone or something like that, please excuse me. So really, really glad to be here. Last week we had a pre-recorded show. I was out doing an event that was a major failure. Just want to let you know. No, it was it was it was okay. But uh, anyways, we uh, so I'm here live today, and this is going to be it's a big deal today because first of all, um, we're going to have call-ins. So um, the two or three of you out there that are hearing this right now, please uh, get get your phones ready. <laughs> so uh, the second half of the show, we'll do call-ins. That way, if you got any questions, we can take them. I also have a guest here today, a uh, guy named Gary Kaufman that I've known for a while. And uh, Gary's on the mic now, so he, you know, if you hear somebody else talking in the room, that's him. He's a pretty funny guy. So every once in a while, if you hear somebody say something funny, it's probably him. And so... I don't know why Hi, he's Steve. not saying. That. <laughs> yeah, see, see, even that was funny, wasn't it? So, uh, so anyway, so welcome to the show. I want to let's update uh, what's going on with uh, mosquitoes and the viruses and all that kind of stuff because uh, we did get a little bit of news this week. Uh, there's more pools with West Nile uh, mosquitoes in them. Um, so, uh, so that's you know, it's a little bit of news. It's a little bit concerning. You know, I think uh, Zach Thompson, I've been saying it, I think there is a chance that this could be a big year for West Nile virus. Um, To this point, we have not had uh, human cases here in Dallas, but we do have mosquitoes with the West Nile virus. What that means is, is that, you know, they're they're catching these mosquitoes in these traps out in the woods, and that means the mosquitoes have them and they're carrying it so you can get it. So, it's important that you protect yourself. West Nile virus is, it could possibly be worse than Zika if you get it. So the news on Zika is this, guys. It's, it's, it's not really much different than it was last week. If you're a pregnant woman, definitely you need to be concerned. You need to stay indoors. If you go outside, you need to wear a repellent. Um, as with, with all times when there's diseases, uh, disease mosquitoes out there, you need to have long sleeves. Uh, long pants. Um, you need to make sure you clear all the standing water in your yard, things like that, uh, and wear repellent. And so if I were you, I would wear a repellent that's more effective than DEET, and that would be the Mosquito Steve uh, spray-on repellent. So um, that's going to give you hours of protection instead of just 45 minutes of protection. Um, but, you know, Zika is here. It's in Texas, but it's very important to note that none of the mosquitoes, we have no mosquitoes with Zika. There are none in the U.S. So so every single case that's been transmitted in the U.S. has come through having sex. And so, um, so I am like the last guy on earth to talk about um, sex because I, I don't, it's, I, you know, I hang out with mosquitoes instead of have a social life. And so, uh, but here's the thing. So if somebody travels overseas and comes back and they've been to areas where Zika is, can you just not have sex for a week? Because once, if you can do that, your chances of getting Zika are nil. Not going to happen. Yeah. See, that's, that's, now I'm talking about sex with another person. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's, but, but anyways, if, if, yeah, so if you've been in an area where Zika is, it's literally people, that's it. One week, one week and we're done. If you can with, refrain for one week, then the disease will be gone from the person that was carrying it. They can't pass it on and they can never get Zika again. So it's really, it's that simple. And so it's amazing that we actually have people getting it. Come on. I look, I know what it's like to be in love. Um, I think I do actually. Love's probably changed. Everything else has changed, so that's probably changed. Well, what so. about the mosquitoes? Are they? Giving, They're having giving sex. the Zika to, I mean, Zika to each other. Um, so here's here. This is what so with West Nile virus. If a mosquito get ha, is carrying West Nile virus and it bites a human being and passes on the West Nile virus, another mosquito cannot bite you and get West Nile virus and then carry it. With Zika, that's not the case. If you have Zika virus and a mosquito lands on you and bites you, it can get the Zika virus and it can carry it. 
But again, it's that that four day to one week, that window right there, if you can withhold from having sex or just the thing is that that's how long it takes to incubate in the body. So it, once that's gone, then it's over. Most people are not going to show symptoms of, of Zika. It's it's very mild flu like if you do have it. And so um, it really is. It's about it's about pregnancy. It's about pregnant women. So. If you're a pregnant woman, definitely be careful. And, and you know, yeah, you probably shouldn't be traveling to areas where there are um, z- where there's Zika-carrying mosquitoes. If I was uh, trying to get pregnant, had a, a wife and she was pregnant, I would not want her traveling over there. So, um, so that's the bottom line. Now, what's been happening, though, of course, everybody, the latest news is everybody's pulling out of the Olympics and because they're afraid to go down there. And that's really, guys, that's that's being a little bit silly because, I mean, it's it really is. It's like flu. And if you wear repellent, you really – you shouldn't have to worry about that. It's not that hard to wear repellent. It's just not. Now, I'm sure that they've gone down there with a whole bunch of off with DEET in it, and they're probably sponsoring the Olympic team. So, um, so yeah, if you're wearing off with DEET in it, then, yeah, then maybe you should be concerned. You're saying people are pulling <laughs> out of the Olympics because of mosquitoes? Yes, they are, because of the Zika virus. So uh, there's tons of them. Oh, my God, it's it's going crazy. So I got a whole list of them here. Um, and, and here's part of the problem. So so there's um, there was ABC News did this deal a couple of days ago. Let me let me read you this quote. This is by uh, Dr. William Schaffner, not not to be uh, not the guy from Star Trek. I'm afraid the more we learn, the nastier the Zika virus is," said Dr. William Schaffner, an infectious disease expert at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, told ABC News. I don't I don't I have no idea what he's talking about because actually, the more we learn, we haven't really learned that much. What we haven't learned anything different. We still know it's a very mild disease in most people, and so, um, so this this concerns me. And what that does is that feeds in the fear. So that's at the top of this article, and then it goes on to talk about all the athletes getting scared. Well, yeah, if you've got doctors of infectious diseases saying, "Oh my gosh, we you know the more we learn, the worse it is." No, maybe the more you learned, but but the truth is is that. You know, we we pretty much know we know everything about it right now. We just don't have a vaccine for it. And that's that's the issue. We don't have a vaccine. So um, we do know, look, just you don't want anything that a mosquito carries. You don't want encephalitis. You don't want West Nile. You don't want Zika. You don't want chikungunya. You don't want any of those things. So why not just be careful and protect yourself? I uh, Dengue fever was uh, discovered in the Florida Keys um, So f- this year. Um, so dengue fever, you don't want dengue fever. Trust me, you don't want that either. And that kills people. So, uh, so the thing is, it's always a good idea to just be careful. So it comes down to fear. It's just fear. Everybody's afraid. So, um, you know, that's why when people say, well, how do you get from mosquitoes to, um, to spirituality or to uh, recovery or to mental health or to wellness, health, wellness, yeah. wellness, that's a good, see, that's why you're here. Yeah, wellness. You sound like an NPR you DJ. Think the, let me ask you this. Do you think the government is putting more mosquitoes into our environment to scare us? <laughs> I don't think I don't think the government is putting more mosquitoes in our environment, but I, I will tell you now there's there's studies where they're actually doing the genetically modified mosquitoes. Um, and so here's the thing. I think that's dangerous. I you know, genetically modified stuff doesn't seem like a good idea to me and it seems like we might be building the super mosquito if we do that because mosquitoes adapt very quickly and i think what will happen is if we start you know making them sterile i think mosquitoes will figure out a way to survive they seem to survive um, lots of stuff in north texas it used to take two weeks for a mosquito to go through the larval stage and now it goes through the larval stage in five days because of the drought, because puddles don't stick around for two weeks. So just in a few years, they adapted to that. They've adapted to where they're um, they're resistant to DEET, they're resistant to permethrin, pyrethrins, to all those things. And so that's why I think it's always a good idea to, you know, just why don't we just protect ourselves? What? How about personal responsibility? How about that? You're responsible for protecting yourself when you go outside. Now, that to me... There's a good idea. Well, looking at the other side of it, 
what are bats, other than being food for uh, mosquitoes, being food for bats, what, what good are they in our... I hear that, that guano is like a great fertilizer, but um, other than that, uh, other so than, yeah, yeah. I mean, are so they, are they are they serve any? Here's the deal. They there's uh, because I do uh, at least once a week. Somebody asks me, "Can I get some purple martins? Will that take care of it? <laughs> Can I get some bats and that'll take care?" Look, they they can't eat enough. That's kind of like saying, you know what, Steve, we're not, we're gonna get rid of. Uh, all the pizza. Look, I'll find pizza somewhere, <laughs> but but you cannot make enough pizza for me. So, um, so no, we there's the deal is that the bats can't eat enough of them. The mosquitoes, the the population, what we see floating around your legs when you're sitting outside, that's only a few. You're not seeing the whole picture. That's why I do the testing I do, and that's why I'm able to find out. You know that we do. There's thousands and thousands of mosquitoes in these yards. So, so um, all right. So we're coming up on a break here in a minute. But um, you, you heard Gary, and uh, you and you're probably your your side splitting. You're laughing so hard. So, no. <laughs> anyways, Gary's gonna uh, be on with me. We're gonna start transitioning from mosquitoes into other things. Remember, I um, want you to call in um, at halftime here, 214 or 817-787-1190, 214 or 817-787-1190. We'll start taking calls here at the halfway point. But when we come back, we're going to talk to Gary. I want to talk a little about mental health, about natural products. He's a natural product guy. So, uh, anyways, this will be fun. So, uh, come right back. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. Hey, just want to let y'all know, I forgot to tell y'all, this is my first day without steroids in like two and a half weeks. Does the show look at my muscles? Look at that. No, but um, uh, finally off medication. So um, this is my first day to feel normal again, uh, which is pretty exciting. I'm ready to um, I'm ready to go online natural. So um, see how things are. I don't do medication. It's so bizarre that I used to do acid and snort cocaine and smoke crack and um this is a very long time ago this is over 20 years ago but um uh but it's just baffling to me that i used to be able to do that and now i can't take medication uh, and i don't handle it very well so anyways welcome back to the show this is uh, we're going to start transitioning so here's the thing i would not um be doing this mosquito stuff had i not got into recovery uh, back in 1995, I was uh, heading down the wrong path and s- circling the drain, and and uh, life was was not good at all. And uh, I, I like to go to jail a lot, like to get in a lot of trouble, and and uh, and wanted to die all the time. And so, if it hadn't been for recovery, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have these opportunities that I've got right now, um, which are just amazing. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for for what's going on in my life today. So, um, um, Gary, I know you have uh, Gary Kaufman's here with me. Gary is with uh, Memorial Herman um, out of Houston, and um, Gary has a lot of experience with recovery and um, also with treatment. Um, and so I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about some of that and what goes on. But Gary's also him and his wife are, are naturalist. I know that um, she she was because I know she was very interested in, in the Mosquito Steve stuff from the very beginning because it's natural products. So um, so first of all, welcome to the show. And um, and Thanks, how Steve. is Christy anyway? She's very very good, very good. good. She doesn't uh, it just going going back to the mosquitoes for a second. She doesn't get bit like I do. Uh-huh. Mosquitoes love me. I don't know if it's the blood type. I don't know if it's uh, my heart rate is up and I'm a little more high strung. I don't know. I don't know. And but I find if I wear more clothes, I get bit <laughs> less. Yes, does I, that make sense? Gary lives out in East Texas. I think they run around naked out there or something. Well, we but, used to, uh, and I just got tired of <laughs> mosquito getting, bites everywhere. getting bit yeah. everywhere. And so it, it actually, be, so we we emit. 300 different compounds. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I just had somebody just this morning say, well, my pharmacist told me that if I can uh, eat a lot of b- vitamin B1, if I'll take a lot of vitamin B1, <laughs> that mosquitoes won't bite me. Look, people, that's it's not true. It is not true. There's 300 different compounds that we emit. So unless you can zero in on exactly all those 300 compounds, then you are still susceptible to get mosquito bites. I think there's a lot of questions that I that people have that, there, I have I wear shoes and socks. Okay, <laughs> good thing. How are the tops of my feet getting bit? I've got six bites on my left foot on the top. 
Okay. And there's no mosquitoes in my bed. No, but there's probably, it's more likely it's probably chiggers. So, chiggers. Uh, chiggers, yeah. So, a lot of people, I, I get contact from a lot of people that say, you know, I'm not seeing any mosquitoes, but I'm getting mosquito bites all over me. A lot of times it's chiggers. And so, um, that was a big deal when I was a kid. I remember chiggers bothered me a lot more than mosquitoes did. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so chiggers, they're really, really tiny little red, tiny bugs. Um, repellent will help and what you can do you might have some in your shoe or in your closet or something like that you can actually take my mosquito repellent and you can spray it around there and that'll get rid of it okay. you know when i was getting bug bites and got really really sick i treated my whole bedroom with my spider repellent so that i you know and, and i haven't had any bug bites since so okay. um so that that is the way to do it. I have a question for you. So 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 as we talk transition into mental health, I, I just have to ask you. This is this is the question I've been dying to Are ask. Are you saying you don't want to talk about mosquitoes anymore? I, I want to, but I have to ask you this question because <laughs> I've been dying to ask you. So why don't you work for the treatment center that works three times better than all the other treatment centers? I hear them on the radio. They claim that they work three times better. Is wow. That, <laughs> That's it. You're getting right into it right out of the gate, aren't you? I am. Like I couldn't wait stuff. to ask you that question. Yeah, and, and I think uh, how can they the, make that claim? You really, mean is though? this the one that that charges a hundred thousand dollars for yeah. thirty days of yes, treatment? Yeah, yeah. Better living through modern chemistry. I think one of them has a program, uh, and I'm not going to say the program that yeah. they have, but you go out on a yacht and look at whales and and no, yeah. It's part of it's one of their programs to help treat drug addiction. Wow. Yeah. That is fascinating. Yeah. Why didn't I do that? I don't know if it, you look at a dolphin and a whale and maybe they, they, you, you know. The dolphin and the whale are my brothers. The dolphin and the whale <laughs> prevent you from smoking <laughs> more crack. Um, I don't know which one you're talking about. So, I can but tell how you can that, they make that claim? Let I mean, me just, just tell you, you mentioned Memorial Hermann out of Houston, and, and, and I work for a, the Memorial Hermann Prevention and, and Recovery Program, and we have uh, – uh, you know, we treat drugs and alcohol, and uh, you treat drugs well, and alcohol. We, or you treat, we treat, treat drugs and alcohol, but we <laughs> treat now we're a drug and alcohol <laughs> treatment program in Houston called the Park Prevention Recovery Center, and uh, we're also dual diagnosis. So if you've got you know PTSD or mood disorders or depression, uh, we can treat you as well. And the question you have about this other this other. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I would love to know who it is. We'll wait for the break to find out who that is. But um, three times better. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What are they doing? I don't know. But I can tell you this. Uh, like you, Steve, I'm, I was circling the drain, I think you used. Is that the phrase? Uh, back in the 80s in California, in the early 80s. And, and uh, I fortunately got help and, and uh, have been in recovery ever since. And that's great. But I don't have any experience with opiates. I don't have any experience with, you know, pharmaceutical uh, drugs. But I can tell you that it's a big deal in this country right now. Where there's a lot of, um, uh, I love joking around, but this is a serious situation, mm -hmm. and, and there's really nothing funny about it at all because people are dying. But as, according to the Center for Disease, Con Disease Control, um, there's been more people that have died in 2014. More people died of drug overdoses in the history of the world. Right. Uh, the majority of drug overdoses, more of them are six out of 10 involve an opioid. So since 99, the number of overdose deaths invo involving opio opioids, including prescription opioid pain relievers and heroin, nearly quadrupled. Yeah. So, so you since know, since 99, quadrupled. And every like car accidents are a big deal here. And that's kind of the way where we compare. And now... Um, opi opioid overdoses are killing more people than car accidents every year, which is just it's it's baffling how quickly it's not just that it's such a large number. It's how quickly this has happened. And um, and so I know there's a lot of reasons for that. But um, but I know that you're you guys um, at Memorial Herman have pain it's a chronic um, pain program. Chronic pain yeah. program because because ultimately that's really where like like from in Texas one of the highest increases in people checking into treatment centers evidently was was moms 
and and women because they would get these pain medications subs- prescribed to them, not subscribed, but prescribed to them, and then they couldn't afford those anymore, and they would go move on to heroin. As that's what I understand is happening. It, it, that's happened a lot. Um, there's some studies. First, you know, from 2000 to 2014. In 14 years, nearly half a million people died from drug overdose. 78 Americans die every day from an opiate, opiate opioid uh, overdose. So what, what's happening? You know, uh, uh, chronic pain is a big part. Uh, according to the um, uh, National Institute of Drug Abuse, there's 100 million people are suffering from chronic pain. So that's a third, wow. almost a third wow. of our country is suffering from some kind of chronic pain. Okay. Well, is that just a backache? Is that because our bellies it's, it's, are too it's big a wide, and it's, it's lower it's, back? It's many, many, many. Okay. General, just general chronic pain. Could be from a car accident, they fell down, a sports injury, whatever it is. Is it possible that we don't have more people? It's just that it's just that now we're such weenies. We have to have we don't we can't live with pain for very long. Is that I mean it it's gotta be part of it. I mean we're just we're we're Well, I, I think I think that from what I've seen, I think it would be nice to see people open to the idea of not taking a pill immediately. So it's so easy. I'm in pain. Give me a pill. Yep. Let's look, at, look, let's look at some other things. Let's look at other things that, that are, you know, it's the quickest, easiest way. I'm out of the pain. But what happens with so many people is they, they start taking the opiates. They get addicted. The pain's not gone, but they're taking more and more opiates. So is that what what Memorial Harmon does is they, they offer alternatives to medications, but they offer medications too, or is that is a combination? Yeah. That's, and that's a great question. And and you're going to see a lot, a lot of around the country and uh, some of the people that um, have historically offered great treatment are now doing medication assisted treatment. So the, the word suboxin comes up and, uh, as opposed to doing something that's total abstinence based, they're giving Suboxone for 18 months. Well, how do you get off Suboxone then? Right. Suboxone is addicting. Uh, is that the addictive. Patrick Kennedy? Is that his program? Him and I saw him in, uh, well, it's not Fig Newton. What's uh, that's the guy's name? Fig Newton. Uh, yeah, Fig Newton. No, 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 Let's just go the, with Fig Newton. What is the guy? Was it used to be Speaker of the I House? really don't know what Patrick uh, Kennedy is. Oh, my gosh. Patrick Kennedy has been a great advocate for Newt, uh, Newt Gingrich. Thank Newt you. Gingrich. There, woo. Okay. I will say Patrick Kennedy has been a great advocate for getting uh, uh, our country, our government to recognize insurance and, and really, I mean, to get our insurance to come on board to pay uh, and cover mental health and chemical uh, dependency uh, where, it, where it needs to be treated. Um, well, they were talking specifically about a medication to help you get off opioids. That would be and Suboxone. They, that would be That's Suboxone. One That's what I was wondering. That's one of the that. most common ones. We, we, we're abstinence-based where we are. Some of the bigger places that were abstinence-based for 40 years are now doing uh, – they're, they're just the, – their first way of treating opiate addiction is to get people on Suboxone. Uh, we will use medication in the detox process. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to uh, treatment, we believe in the abstinence-based treatment. That is awesome. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I didn't know that about y'all. I should have known it because I know y'all are first class, and that's that's kind of – that's my belief. I really – uh, it scares me. The whole prescription thing, just like what I just did when I was sick, I just had to do the steroids. My last time was antibiotics, and and this last time it was steroids. And I have to tell you, it affected me in so many horrifying ways. I don't ever have to. I don't. I don't ever want to do that again. So, um, so when we come back, I do want to. We're we're going to open up the lines for calls if people want to call in. Gary and I have a whole bunch of stuff we can talk about, so we're going to be on here uh, for half an hour talking about mental health. I do want to get into juicing and natural th- natural um, uh, products and things like that with you guys, too. Um, and then we'll hear more about Memorial Harmon. So if you do have a question about mosquitoes, about mental health, about natural products or anything like that, please give us a call, 214 or 817 and then 787-1190 and we'll be right back after this break welcome back to the mosquito steve show that's gary kaufman on the base there sounds great gary you're doing really well your lessons are coming along i'm very impressed so um okay so uh we're here with gary kaufman from memorial herman 
Um, we also, uh, we're talking about mosquitoes. We're talking about mental health. We're talking about all kinds of things. Call in if you'd like, 214 or 817-787-1190. You can call in from all over the country. And um, we've got, oh, no calls yet. Okay, so I don't even know how we do this when we get calls, so this should be fun. So um, that's all right. You can wait and call us next week then. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Gary, big news here. I know you're not a huge football guy, huge Dallas Cowboy fan, but i got to tell you. So the big news this week is uh, Rolando Regonk McLean, who was suspended for 10 games uh, for substance abuse. Was it four four games before? Four and games last games. week okay. and 10 games this year. And, uh, and, and it's baffling me. Of course, Johnny Manziel watching, you know, he's on the news every night. It's just ridiculous to me. I, you know, I was never in a place where, um, gosh, if I didn't do drugs, I could make millions and millions of dollars. My deal was, you know, if I didn't do drugs, I might get off the street. That was about it. These guys, they could, they're worth millions of dollars if they just refrain from doing drugs. It's kind of like the just refrain from having sex with somebody that's been over in Zika country. So just say no. Then. Yeah, just kind of like Betty. I guess so. Maybe that's it. Maybe. Yeah, I yeah, just say no didn't work for me. But but I'll tell you, I, I don't get it. Is it how is it possible that the allure of smoking a joint is bigger than making millions of dollars? I mean, if he does that for six, seven years, he'll have millions of dollars in the bank and then he can smoke all the dope dope he wants. I I just don't get it. What that's not about that's yeah, not about that, I don't think. I think it's it's uh you know, uh, some of these guys, big egos, big money. They got a posse around them that, you know, they're, they're, it's like Elvis. Oh. I mean, we can go down that. We can talk yeah. about Elvis if you want, <laughs> but you know, it, 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 it's, I think it's somewhere they think it's nothing's going to happen to them. Bullet, bulletproof, invincible. I've got tons of money. I've got this contract. Everybody loves me. I can do what I want. I'm cool. But so, yeah. so is pot addictive that way because i've i've been told that pot's not addictive i was told when i was growing up when i was smoking pot that it wasn't addictive and and yet it's it's a lot stronger than it was back when i was doing it and so uh is it is it addictive now is that part of it is that because a lot of these guys that's it it's really pot um yeah i think i i think oh i can talk about pot too i mean pot's addictive anything that i think we makes us feel different and it's enjoyable, we're going to want to do more of it and, and people become addictive. But I, I think that, uh, I don't think the statistics show that there's not a lot of people uh, dying from marijuana overdoses in our country. So it does, it's not giving as much energy and, and talk around that. But, the, but guys like Johnny Menzel and these, you know, uh, stars and musicians and, and um, uh, sports figures are ODing and dying and, and getting in trouble and going to jail and missing 10 games and all that kind of stuff. I think we hear about all that because they're in the mainstream of, of uh, uh, on the radio and on TV and that kind of thing. But think of all the people that nobody really knows that are dying and, and in yeah. trouble. And, and So we hear about this stuff. And yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with what you do for a living or where you are or what city you live in or if you live in the country or the city, it's uh, uh, it's uh, a matter of the person, the personality, and the individual. Well, I and and so I know I was told that I have an addictive personality. Of course, I am addicted to food now. Food's my new deal. We we have one call. Oh, we've got a call, Gary. This is exciting. This is the very first call for the Mosquito Steve Show. What do we do? Please welcome PJ. Well, welcome, PJ. Thank you. Are you ready for my question? I am ready. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, we were just on uh, the pond tour, and someone that was here suggested that I give you a call. Okay. In our, in our backyard, we have almost totally all native plants, and we have a stream that runs, so no, no sitting water, but I do have mosquitoes. So I'm wanting to know if your product is something that we could use that wouldn't harm either my fish or my native plants. Very, very good question, PJ. So, um, yes, so we have a yard spray and a misting product. Neither one will harm the fish. 
um, or the plants. That's what's great about our stuff is we don't burn vegetation and we don't harm fish. Most of the products out there, including the one that most people, and I'm doing air quotes here, botanical insecticide, that will actually harm fish and it can burn plants. So, um, yes, so that's a good question. Here's the thing. You mentioned that there's no standing water, that the water's moving, and so it's it's important to note the 80s mosquito in particular, and there are other species like this, it actually lays its eggs on the side near the water, just above the water line. And so what happens is, is if that water level rises just a little bit, even if it's moving, it will hydrate that egg and all of a sudden you can have some 80s mosquitoes. So so, uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be just standing water. It could be moving water too. And so, uh, but no matter what you do, it takes two steps. It's really critical. So what I would recommend is a yard spray. Um, obviously, I think mine is better than anybody else's. I have do-it-yourself, and I've got service providers. I've got lots and lots of great service providers. Chris, the Mosquito Man. We've got um, uh, Safe Haven, of course, Ron's Organics. I've got lots of good service providers. I would recommend giving them a call if you want help or just go on my website and you can find the do-it-yourself. Do a yard spray. What that does is it can spray underneath your plants, on top of your plants, under furniture, under, you know, anywhere that a mosquito can hide. That gives you about two weeks of general coverage. And then you want to do some sort of misting, whether it's a hand mister. I've got them for, you know, very inexpensive hand misters for the, the do-it-yourself guy. Or get a misting system. But it takes both. Misting alone is probably not going to do it. And yard spray alone is probably not going to do it. You, you really need both of the products. And so, uh, so that was a that's a great question. Did that help? Yes. Now, so if I put in some misting, does it have to go all the way around the perimeter of the yard? No, no. Our product is actually it's a repellent. So um, now most of your guys that are putting in the the products with the chemicals, they're going to want to go all the way around the yard because they are killing. So they're going to try and strangle from the outside in. We're, we're the opposite. What we want to do is we just want to protect the area that you're going to be sitting and standing in. And so, okay. you know, so you have a very small, inexpensive misting system. We've got them for under 1500 bucks. That's that's pretty inexpensive for an automated uh, misting system with a remote control. And so you could use something like that. And that actually pushes them out and away instead of trying to strangle them and kill them from the outside in. <laughs> yeah, it is, does seem kind of a... What's it called? A hypocritical? Hub? Not yes. That yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're, 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 it's be definitely killing them and saying I'm, yeah. I'm raising native things and I'm going to kill these other things. Yeah. Yeah. It is definitely overkill. It just blows my mind that that uh, because here's the thing: if it kills mosquitoes, it's killing ladybugs, butterflies, and bees too. And so I, we've got to start being more careful about our bee population. So so I think it's uh, it's very important. But hey, I really appreciate the call, PJ. Uh, you guys, anytime that you uh, want to, be feel free to send me an email to Steve at mosquitosteve.com, and that way you know I can answer you know when I'm not on the air too. So I think we have okay. another caller. Thank you, PJ. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. We have Jim online, too. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. Jim. Yeah. There you are. Jim. Hey, Jim, how are you? I'm wonderful. Mosquito Steve, and how are you? This is a lovely day. Yeah, I'm doing great. I Absolutely incredible. I'm not on steroids today, so I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah, you sound a lot better today, a little bit more relaxed, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Not that you didn't go get a show last week, but... What I want to say is, first of all, thank you, Mosquito Steve. Well, you're thank welcome. Thank you for, for your wonderful prod, product because on the subject of mental mental illness uh, and mental disease, I was out fishing out on Tawakini, <laughs> and I was just diseased. <laughs> mosquitoes was getting me. Now, I remember the friend that gave me a, a two ounce of that, that their uh, spray stuff. And uh, the mosquito, Steve, I put it on, and guess what? <laughs> the mosquitoes just, they just was mosquito nose. <laughs> no more mosquito biting, and I swear I was even catching bigger fish. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and when I got home, I was cleaning them fishing, you know, I went inside, and my wife even said, oh, you smell pretty. <laughs> 
That's what I try to tell people is that, you know, some of these guys, you smell better than you've ever smelled before. It is pretty good smelling stuff. That's, well, that is great. I had some perfume on or something, and I was like, nah, you're wearing no perfume. That's a mosquito, Steve. Uh, <laughs> are you retired, or do you, how, often do you, how often do you fish? I'm an avid fisherman, which is whenever I can. That is I'm great. That is great. I, yeah, I wish I had more time to fish. You know, I grew up fishing. And uh, it was one of those things that, uh, uh, you know, I, I loved it. I used to catch more turtles than fish. I think I bothered <laughs> well, everybody I, around I, me because I always I caught the you, turtles. Yeah, I've caught many of them on the tri line, and just sometimes you, they swallow the hook, and you just got to cut them <laughs> off and let them poor things go and wish the best for them. But thank you, Mosquito Steve. i just got to say and thank you for this show, and it's just a God bless you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you calling in. You have a great day. You that too, was- sir. That was a great call. I appreciate that. Okay, so um, so Gary, I, I got to tell you, you know, fishing. I've got friends that go fishing. That is part of their mental health. It really is. I mean, that it's, it's amazing how much it's how very relaxing therapeutic it is. It and is. relaxing. It is. Absolutely. Uh, I, I do want to ask you something about. I will say this: your your spray, the it, it works. It does, and I, I know you know that. <laughs> Has anybody else told yeah. you that it works? Wow, thank you, Gary. <laughs> I'm, is it, am I the first one? Mm-hmm. No, but it, it does work. Uh, and I am. I use the the other spray in the spray bottle. That's the different chemicals. I think right yes. in the spray. Yeah. Um. And she mentioned PJ mentioned the goldfish. If it's going to hurt the goldfish, is there anything else that we could that it will. It doesn't really kill anything, but it repels, so it yeah. keeps them away. Yeah. So we we've got moths and and bees and stuff that we like in the garden. Is that it, will it uh, keep that stuff away, repel it, or kill it, or what? Or so what and that and that's about? that's a good question. So our stuff because it's a repellent, it's not going to kill anything. We actually have clients that have that raise honeybees, and we treat their yard and do misting. And so worst case scenario, we'll push them away because we're repellent, but it's the droplet size. It's, it's all about dose with, with uh, pesticides, and so that's what's important. So we do a very, very small droplet size. We irritate the, the insects and push them out. But we have clients, I've told you, I've gotten through. We, we just sprayed their yard. We just missed it. I'm standing out there talking to them and watching butterflies and bees going from okay. flower to flower okay. in their garden. That's it's good just fascinating. So, so the butterflies and the yep. and the. Yeah, Luna moths that we like to look at. Yes, and I know you like your banana spiders too. Banana so, spiders. So we'll talk more about banana spiders uh, when we get back. So we're going to take a break here, and we got one more segment. So call in if you want. And then we got Gary Kaufman here. We'll talk more about mental health and drugs. Okay, thanks. Go, Gary, go. Look at him go on that bass. Man, look at those fingers up and down the neck of that bass guitar. Hey, welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. I uh, just want to remind everybody, look, if you uh, anytime you want to send me an email, we're going to have uh, phone calls every week. So if you have questions, you can call me. But if you've got a question, the uh, best thing to do is send me an email. That way, when I get done at the end of the day, I can answer emails. It's a lot easier than calling me. Sometimes I have to get away from my phone. It just rings too much. So, um, But I uh, want to let you know, you know, i got great guys like Lambert's Mosquito Squad of Lake Highlands, Soils Alive, Ron's Organic, Safe Haven, Mosquito Detective, any of those guys. If you go on my website, there's links to their websites. You can ask them questions. They'll be glad to help. Um, and uh, so we, we've got all kinds of solutions for all kinds of budgets, and uh, so we're here to help you. So a couple of things. First of all, Gary. Uh, Gary Kaufman from Memorial Herman. Uh, we're back with him. And first, before we go any further, I want to make sure that people know how to get a hold of you guys. If they've got chronic pain issues, if they've got addiction issues, um, how, how do they get in touch with Memorial Herman? Yeah, we, Memorial Herman Prevention and Recovery Center, better known as the park down in Houston. Our call center is uh, 713-329-7340. So that's 713-329-7340. And that's our call center. And so, but then now, if somebody's in Dallas and they're going to do intensive do outpatient, resident. they can send them there. We too. actually have an outpatient intensive outpatient program here in Dallas. Okay. Actually, right up the tollway off Keller Springs. And our friend Katie Trungale is running Katie that. Katie Trungale doing, is Katie's awesome. Is our so, and, and I have to get a shout out to Matt Ferry. Uh, Matt is uh, is the CEO of Park, right? That's right. And and uh, a great guy, really great guy. So I want to give him a shout out to him. I know he's probably not listening. He's probably out driving a Corvair. He might or be something. fishing. 
or he could be fishing. He could be fishing with be. the guy at the last caller. <laughs> he he could might be. be. I don't. Okay. So, um, so I, I have. To, I'm got to ask you. So, twelve steps or treatment? How do we decide twelve steps or treatment? Because is it just strictly an insurance? If you got money, go to treatment. If you don't, go to twelve step. Room. What? What? What's the deal? Well, a lot of them run together. A lot of them are intertwined. We have a twelve step. We're the twelve step model. We're, you know, uh, abstinence based. As far as chronic pain and opiate addiction, our goal is to get people out of pain and get them off the opiates. So what do we do to do that? How do you do that? So if somebody comes in, they've got a pain, uh, their number is 8 from 1 to 10. 8 is a pretty high number of pain. We want to get them down to 4 and get them off the opiates. Well, how do you do that? So uh, we offer occupational physical therapy, of course, meditation, yoga, mindfulness, acupuncture, biofeedback. You know, okay. virtual reality. So we so do a lot of things. Is a mosquito bite, is that considered pain? Because we, we have another call, and I don't know if this is a mosquito call or a mental health call. It's a mosquito call. Okay. We're, we're sorry. Maybe I, maybe this is too much, try to mix mosquitoes no, and I mental health. No, I think it's good. And I think that there's a lot of mosquitoes that are suffering from chronic pain <laughs> that we don't even know about. <laughs> That's true. You know, All right, right, who's called in? We've got Matt on line one. Hello, Matt. Matt, you there? I'm here. Hey, Matt, how you doing? I am doing wonderful, and how are you doing? I'm doing super, thank you. So I've got a question. I've been um, hiking since I was uh, about five, and I've been a deep user forever, but I'm a single dad. I've got one daughter with asthma and one daughter who gets welts about the size of half dollars if she gets bitten by mosquitoes. I'm wondering what's your opinion are on uh, other options that are less of a harsh chemical to be using. Well, obviously, I'm going to tell you about my product because that's – so here's what sets me apart. I don't know if anybody has a chance, if you can got a chance to go to Facebook and look at the video we just posted from last week. Mike Castellucci did a great story on Mosquito Steve. Here's what sets me apart from the other guys. I literally stand outside and I count how many mosquitoes land on me. I've done this hundreds and hundreds of times. I've tested my products. I've tested everybody else's. I've had as many as 900 mosquito bites in one night. And all of that because I want to know how the mosquitoes behave and what works and how long it works. And I can tell you right now, in every single test with DEET, it broke down at 45 minutes. The only product that didn't was was the 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 um, well, I don't, I don't want to say a brand name, but let's just say the Deep Woods version lasted a little bit longer. But it's very heavy and deep, and so. But most of the deep products wore, wore down at 45 minutes. So, my product actually at three hours, we're still at 90 percent efficacy. So we are many times better than those products, and that's really that's my message. So what I would suggest is that you try. Uh, we've even got the little two ounce bottles. There's retailers you can see on my website that carry the products. So if you want to um, give us a try, try the two ounce. It's not that expensive to give it a try. It really does work. Very, very important because especially with girls and women, the first thing they want to do when they spray it on is rub it in. It's like like a perfume or something. Do not do that. Anytime you spray a repellent, whether it's mine or somebody else's, if you rub it in, it's half as effective as it was before it started. So get a spray-on repellent, just spray it on, and if you'll try mine out, I bet you you're going to be happy. Um, it's it, it will last longer, and it smells good, and it works. Did that answer your question? How do you do on hypersensitive skin? It's, it should be fine on hypersensitive skin. It's essential oils. Now, I mean, there are people that are going to be allergic to, you know, um, to some of the essential oils in there. So if you don't have any allergies to the essential oils, you actually, there's a big, big picture on my website of uh, the uh, repellent so you can see what's in it. It's right there on the front of the label. It tells you exactly what products are in it. So if you want to look on there, if there's any allergies to any of those essential oils, if there's not, then it should be fine. It shouldn't cause any problems. Great. Thank you so much for the information. Well, thanks for calling in, Matt. I appreciate it. Okay, yeah. back to Gary here. So one more time, just in case we run out of town, I want to make sure. What is the number again to call if somebody... Uh, has a mosquito bite and it's causing them chronic pain in oh, their back. Chronic pain, they yeah, need, they need help. <laughs> that's right. Or if it's a mosquito that has that's right. chronic pain that's, that's right. addicted opiates. That's right. 713 uh, 329 Okay. That's All a right. call in number. So, yeah, we we covered that. And, and it, it's quite a transition to go from mosquitoes and uh, 
and to chronic well, pain and the, opiate addiction. <laughs> and, and there's a reason. So the whole reason, just so you know, because I, I think we'll have Gary back on. I think, you know, when we're not trying to uh, push an agenda here, we'll have Gary back on because really we, we usually we have a lot of fun. And I don't think it's a coincidence that, that we've had three calls in the last few minutes. I, I don't either. I think it's I mean, just because of you. That's right. <laughs> uh, but but I will tell you, the um, uh, Dan, you may forget what I was going to say. Dad, government, it was a, so important, too. It was a very important point. It was going to change the world. No, the reason that I do this and the reason I'm tying it all together is because, first of all, the problem is, is it with chemicals. So the guys that used to tell us back in the 70s that it's okay to smoke cigarettes, the guys, the, the PR guys that used to do that, those guys are now working with the chemical companies. And they're telling us that, you know what? Chemicals are safe. It's not hurting anybody. Look, look, you go to the, some of these pest control guys that have been doing it for years. Look, what, nobody's getting hurt by doing this. You know, the big, big pest control companies. Here's the thing. My goal is to let people know natural products can be better than the chemicals. They can be better. I bet you there's guys that have cleaning products that are all natural that are better than the chemicals. So I that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to let people know you don't have to use chemicals. There are options. There's alternatives. So so uh, alternatives. I had a pro- problem saying that word, alternatives. So so that's my goal. And that's why you know, I know you guys are all natural. I know you all like using natural stuff. I know, um, um, I know, I know Christy's worried about the animals and the critters and y'all got cats wandering around and besides your banana spiders and i know you're partial <laughs> to the banana spiders anything with a banana on it uh so um so, anyway, so okay we got two minutes left okay. you have one minute to tell them this the most important thing you have to say today what do you want to share with people that we don't want to miss uh i would think i would say the over, number one thing or, or overall would be that whatever it is that people are, are are suffering from, that there's help out there for you. So if you've got uh, people are suffering from sex addiction, gambling addiction, you know they've got eating disorders, uh, drug and alcohol addiction, whatever it is that you suffer from. Uh, the great thing about current times is that we've got help and we've got programs for what uh, whatever it is that people are suffering from. You know there's help. And uh, I, I like to be a resource to be able to help people uh, with whatever it is they're suffering from. That's great. That's what we want to hear. Okay, you guys, that is another week and another show. And uh, so, uh, you know what? I'm, I kind of, this was awesome. I'm really glad you could join us today, Gary, because this was a lot of fun. Thank you. And, Let's do it again, please. Uh, we will do this again. And uh, yeah, when we don't have such an agenda, we can just ban her because uh, we can have lots of fun. So, um, anyways, you guys have been a great audience. I appreciate the call-ins today. We'll do call-ins again next week. I think Mosquito Detective is going to be in with us in the studio next week. And then, Gary, you're welcome anytime you want. Um, and, uh, hey, if you got any questions, send an email to steve at mosquitosteve.com. I'm going to take a couple of days off. I hope you all have a happy fourth and a safe one. And uh, God bless you.